Morning folks, this is Rick, La La Farm, uh, early May, and uh, looks like we uh, are kind of winding down on this whole uh, coronavirus, uh, uh, the, the big part of it, and now we're kind of into the uh, continuation of the social distancing. Uh, who knows how long this is going to go on for. Uh, you know, we are hugely thankful here on the farm that, that our... Um, our livelihood is not entirely dependent upon, um, you know, interaction with the public, uh, that uh, we are blessed in that uh, we kind of work uh, self-employed uh, and work, um, work by ourselves a lot anyway. So that's not something that really had a huge impact uh, on our uh, viability uh, as a family. But uh, so today going to kind of introduce you to the next kind of big project on the farm. If you've been following us uh, for any amount of time, you realize a lot of our resources have gone into, um, have gone really into the goats and to the chickens, the livestock, uh, making sure that they have uh, good uh, shelter, uh, protection, uh, to protect them from any predators. So um, now we're going to move kind of that focus to uh, the next phase of the farm, which really kind of is, is the part that I've been really, really eager and anxious to get going on. Uh, we had hoped to start by spring, which is the garden. Um, you know, we have been on this property now for about three years. Um, and, you know, we haven't had to be, we haven't had the opportunity or I haven't had the time uh, to yet put in a garden. It's something that, that I've always gardened. Um, I used to garden when I was a young kid, um, probably starting eight, ten years old, and we had a garden all the way up, or I had a garden um, that I would put in and kind of maintain um, all the way up until I uh, went into the military after I graduated high school. And then my wife and I, Lala and I, would have small uh, gardens here and there, depending on where we were living, but nothing that provided us a good uh, degree of, of sustenance. Um, that's going to change hopefully uh, this year. We're you know, going to begin working on the garden now uh, and hopefully we will have something uh, in the ground late summer and our first garden will be a fall uh, garden this year. Uh, so this video is really just going to kind of introduce you to um, to where the garden is going to be, how we're going to do it. And I think today I'm going to build um, been doing a lot of research on, on different um, boxes. We're going to have both a combination of in-ground garden as well as container garden. Um, the containers, um, the raised beds are going to be around the perimeter of the garden area. We're in northeast Florida, so we got a huge deer problem here. Um, uh, so we're going to build raised beds around the perimeter uh, and combine that uh, so that it looks, um, so combine that with a fence. So not only do we have function in the raised beds, but we also have um, aesthetically, it's going to look nice. That's my plan. Um, so let's kind of orient you to, to the garden. So we, if you look over here, uh, we've got the house, um, behind the house, we've got uh, um, Kind of the dog kennel and we got our front chicken coop over here uh, over in the distance and then we come back and we're in the goat the goat paddock uh, that we're looking into right now this is the buck pen uh, over behind the second barn uh, is the uh, doe pen um, so as we're going down this middle path we've got this kind of overgrown area and what we've been doing is really kind of dumping um, things in here. Um, when I say things, I should be saying stuff. Uh, so chicken litter, uh, chicken straw that we empty out of the, uh, empty out of the two coops that we have. Um, any debris that we chop up, uh, leaves, um, anything like that has all been, there's some, there's some chicken litter over here and chickens come through and and they scratch that down. Here's a pile there. They're scattered throughout here. Here's some peat moss that we had, the bags that the chickens had ripped open. Um, so this is really where the garden is ultimately going to be. The outside perimeter over here, 
Um, we're going to have container boxes going all the way down this side wall. Then we have here, uh, this is going to be the outside wall eventually. Um, the deer fencing, um, probably close to seven feet from ground level. Uh, we're going to use a combination of, uh, we're going to be using a combination of um, the first two feet will be the actual raised bed. Then we'll have probably a 12 inch board on top of that. And then on top of that, uh, a four foot piece of, uh, of uh, cattle or hog and goat uh, fence whatever I can get the cheapest uh, will be on top of that and then we'll cap it off with a nice uh, with a nice cap uh, just to make it look good um, so that's the plan uh, hopefully we will have uh, uh, that started within the next month or so with a goal of having our first seeds in the ground for uh, a fall garden for 2020 um, but let's go ahead and, and kind of put together this prototype uh, box. So this is a combination of um, combination of a wood frame box with a uh, galvanized metal uh, sides on it. Sorry, there's a bee trying to get me. Um, We've done a lot of, I've done also a lot of research. When I say research, I mean research. I don't mean uh, looking at YouTube videos and, and reading other people's blog posts um, regarding uh, the safety of uh, various building supplies for uh, raised beds. Those two building supplies being um, uh, pressure treated wood and galvanized steel. So first we'll cover the pressure treated wood. So. I found two real uh, scientific studies that uh, really concluded ultimately that the level of leaching that you're going to have from a copper-based um, treatment, which is what's been in effect since uh, I believe 2003, if I recall correctly. Uh, prior to that, there was some arsenic-based uh, treatment products, but ever since 2003, everything has essentially been uh, some derivative of copper, or at least what, what most consumer um, used treated wood is. So the question would be, um, does the copper impact um, uh, impact the soil and the plants in that soil uh, sufficiently to cause toxicity in humans. The two studies that I have that I found scientific studies, one from the United States, one from overseas, um, both concluded that while there is leaching that happens from pressure treated wood, that it is not in sufficient levels uh, to be toxic to humans. However, they did both of the studies had uh, kind of uh, uh, caveats, if you will, uh, to say that if it's the least bit concern, then don't use pressure treated wood. Use a more traditional hardwood, uh, old wood, um, um, or a more rot resistant wood, such as a, a cedar. Um, ultimately, I concluded for uh, kind of a combination of cost and um, just appearance, we're going to use ultimately uh, galvanized steel. So then I started looking at toxicity of galvanized steel. Um, then the conclusion is that there's virtually no uh, increased risk from use of galvanized steel products with respect to leaching into food unless the soil that is in that raised bed is going to be um, is going to be acidic. Um, acidic soil is not something that is that is uh, that is probably ever going to be used. There's there's going to be a range of of what your acidity level is in the soil, but most of the time for optimum growing of most vegetables, it's going to be more of a of a balanced uh, neutral uh, pH soil. So as long as the uh, pH or the acidity of the soil is maintained at a neutral level, um, the um, uh, breakdown or the release of of um, um, galvanization uh, particulate or minerals uh, into uh, your soil is virtually zero. Now when the 
acidity of the soil if it were to drop, um, the soil was not maintained appropriately, then you're going to have um, release of some of the uh, treatment chemicals into the soil, which could result in, um, in some uh, concentration levels that again probably would not be uh, hazardous to humans but they are uh, detectable so what I'm gonna go what I'm gonna end up doing uh, essentially these prototypes are the product of looking at uh, I kid you not probably 50 or 60 different videos um, different books uh, looking at what I liked best in some of them what I liked least uh, in some of them. Uh, ultimately the beds like I said are going to go around the uh, both sides of the of the raised of the garden area um, and then in the middle of that will either be additional raised beds or in-ground plantings. Not sure which yet. I'm probably leaning more toward uh, raised beds. Um, Reason being, I'm 53 years old. My knees don't work like they used to. Um, and it's gonna be much, much easier to work those beds uh, standing up or sitting on a little stool than it would be uh, crouched down or climbing through on my knees um, to, uh, to do maintenance in the soil or to harvest for that matter. Um, so let's do this prototype. And so here's the cut list for, uh, for this box. Now, Granted, I understand two foot is not very wide for a raised bed, but these this prototype could be, um, I think, uh, expanded to any width that you want, up to up to eight foot, um, up to eight foot wide if you wanted to do that. Um, but these these initial boxes that we're building have a very specific purpose. They are actually the perimeter wall for uh, for the overall garden. So um, on the exterior of these boxes will be the actual uh, wall to keep uh, essentially deer uh, out of the garden. So uh, here's the cut list. So we've got four uh, here. I've got these clamped together because I'm going to be drilling, pre-drilling them uh, for some countersink holes. Uh, but those four boards are, these are the ends, the outsides of the ends. Um, um, 27 and 3 quarter inches long. Uh, and then We've got 10 of these, which are 21 inches long. These are the vertical supports to give the, to give the uh, box structure uh, all the way around it. Uh, and then there are four eight foot two by four by eights, which are the, obviously the front and back um, of, the, of the box. And then there's two uh, 10 foot sheets of uh, sheet metal uh, that we're gonna be using. Um, so that's the entire list and then um, you know wood screws uh, make sure you use the we're using the ceramic coated um, um, uh, wood screws uh, specifically for exterior uh, pressure treated wood use if you use anything else you run the risk of those uh, screws becoming corroded over time and the whole box falls apart all right so we're going to start out with these uh, with these 27 and 3 quarter inch um, these are the tops and the bottoms on the ends and I said earlier that I'm going to pre-drill uh, some of these because these are going to fit if you, if you kind of picture this so this is the upper piece and then there will be another let's put that here so that's the lower this is the upright and then this is the actual upper bar okay so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to countersink two half inch holes about halfway through this board, which will then allow me to drill through this and into this using a three inch, using a three inch screw. Um, you're not gonna see the holes in the end because that hole is gonna be covered up with a trim piece on top. Um, so that's what I'm doing now is I'm just pre-drilling um, about halfway down through using a half inch bit uh, so that I can basically put my countersink all of these screws. Two countersunk holes 
in each one of these. So when we put these together, it's just gonna be a simple issue of screwing through this board and then into this vertical upright piece on the end. So we're gonna do this. So this is the top and the bottom of the ends. We'll do the same thing on the eight foot pieces um, on the front and the back. All right, so here's a little tip. If you can, try to avoid drilling directly down into the end grain here. If you can, when you put screws in, now, doesn't matter whether you're toe screwing this or toe nailing this, try to put the uh, screw in at an angle. That way you're going across the grain versus directly into the grain. It's gonna always make uh, a tighter joint. Uh, since we're going down into this hole, it may be a little bit tough to do that, but optimally, if you can, um, don't, drill, don't drill directly into, into the end grain of a piece of wood when you're joining them. So we're putting a little extension onto this drill so that we can get um, down into that hole completely. So here's the other end. Now we're gonna do the front and the back. Remember we gotta pre-drill those, so we're gonna do that first. I just find it easier to clamp when you're doing um, repetitive types of, of holes or, or cuts on multiple pieces at the same time to just clamp pieces together. That way you can make draw all of your lines at one time and it just makes it a little easier. So what we're doing is we just basically mark this on the end, use that as a guide. And this is a eight foot board uh, that we're using. So we're gonna put another uh, support right in the middle um, of these two, the top and the bottom. So this is an eight foot board. Halfway would be, uh, would be uh, four foot and then two inches to either side of that roughly. So looking at that there is roughly the middle. Use a good old trusty speed screw. Draw these lines. All right, then we do the same thing we did before. We'll go through and we will uh, pre-drill pre -drill these with a half inch bit. Thank you. 
right, so there's the four sides. Two long ones are the front and the back, obviously. Um, those are true eight foot long. And then you've got the two ends uh, behind them. So let's get these things put together. I note the way that this is going together. Um, the ends are actually on the ends versus on the inside. That way we'll get eight, uh, tr eight true foot of uh, bed space. Um, should only have to make one cut in the steel um, and then uh, attach it to the inside. But on the long end, the first cut's going to be at eight foot. side of that. So now we're going to cut our metal. Um, these are 10 foot pieces. So what I've done is I've marked it at 8 foot with a grease pencil. And we're going to chop, make this first cut uh, at 8 foot. And then uh, the remaining piece, if I've planned correctly, should fit right into, um, should fit right into this. So here's what we got. It's not screwed in yet. So it fits perfectly. So let's go ahead and get these pieces attached. So this is the screw that I'm using. This is a uh, number 10 uh, inch and a half um, uh, screw that's used specifically for uh, for uh, metal roofing applications. I've already got a couple packages of these around for roofing projects that we've done here on the farm. Um, so I'm going to use these. Now you don't have to use screws that have these grommets in there. These do. I'm going to use them but you don't need that. They also sell them with just the washer on them. The washer I think is important because that will keep the screw from pulling back through um, back through the steel. Um, so these are put in with a uh, 5 16 5 driver bit is all we're using to install these. Now on the bottom, what I'm doing is I'm going to put a 2x4 spacer down on the bottom. And that's going to allow appropriate spacing all the way around um, to make sure that uh, 
we've got consistency all the way around. Pull this piece out. Let's see how that's going to work. Okay, so it comes almost up to the top with that spacer in there. Um, and we've got, we're going to have the same type of spacing on the bottom. So let's get this done. I'm going to start in the middle. And note, I'm only putting them, I'm only putting these screws in, I'm only putting these screws in the groove. I'm not putting them on the ridges. And these are self-tapping. good from end to end so uh, that's what we're gonna do is right there product this is the prototype of the box that I will be using for our uh, raised beds uh, and um, basically wall the exterior wall around our around our garden this is kind of phase three on the homestead uh, we've got the livestock uh, taken care of now so what we have now is uh, we've got to get got to get the garden going. All right, folks, here you go. This is our uh, this is the prototype um, of our uh, first raised bed. We only got about 19 or 20 more of these to go. Um, remember, this is going to make up the uh, exterior wall on the east and west sides of our garden. Um, on top of this will be another board and then we'll have some hog and sheet panel on top of that. Overall the structure will be about seven foot tall essentially preventing uh, serving as a, as a uh, deer prevention um, um, fence if you will. Um, deer where we live is a, is a huge problem for gardens. Uh, they will devour a garden very very quickly so we want to try to protect the crops that we work hard to, to, to put in in the future and uh, this is kind of the first step in that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we work real hard to try to get one to two videos out a week um, that have relevancy to what we do here on the farm and just good family uh, wholesome living. Um, if you enjoy the content, make sure to also ring that notification bell to get notification of future content. Until next time, I want to say thank you for visiting the farm. Always treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. Thanks for visiting the farm. See you next time. Bye-bye.